rookies and the way they're defending and Evan Mobley being a great defender already, but also Scotty Barnes, who point of attack, a, just a lockdown defender as a rookie. And the what we used to assume when rookies came into this league was they weren't going to defend. It was just going to take some time. They were going to be bad defenders. Now it seems like a lot more guys are coming into the league and it's because I guess they've been maybe conditioned to the switchability and like what they have to be at the next level. So they start in high school learning to defend all five positions. And they're like, we have to be good defenders if we want to play and we want to make this work. Everybody's got to defend. You can't be a Greg Monroe anymore or Joe Leo looking for you have to defend. Um, And maybe that's where it's coming from. But Barnes was elite right out of the gate. What did you see from Barnes and were you, like as the season went on, did you see a lot of growth? Did you were you surprised by what you saw? Where where are you at with Scotty? Uh, I mean, surprises is, is to say the least. I mean, a mm-hmm. lot of people thought he was going to be um, not as far along offensively. Like he he genuinely did not. A lot of people imagined he'd be like a Draymond S type player where you know he gets his buckets here and there, but he's not going to be an offensive force. And that I think that was. One thing that caught Raptors fans' attention really, really quickly was that this guy, he knows how to score. Um, he has a knack for it, and especially when it comes to attacking the rim, he just he has this ability to embrace contact. Um, mm. and that's I think that's the one thing that always catches my eye in rookies is like how physical they like to be. Um, and Scotty is a guy who does not shy away from physicality at all. He actually embraces it. It's probably one of the best parts about his game. I was gonna say um, earlier with with rookies kind of coming into the league on their own more defensive minded i think the one thing that's helped with that is is this movement into positionless basketball because Mm -hmm. everybody like you said you you have to be able to guard all five positions or at least try to guard all five positions and on top of that because of these these six seven six eight six nine six ten six eleven guys um and scotty's gonna keep growing apparently he's already grown two inches but um, oh really two inches since like the last season or two inches Uh, since the season ended apparently two inches since the last season and then uh, you know there's some rumors right now with photos you know how they do that fancy yeah. photo stuff so i don't know maybe he's got what would that put him at now season. he should be at six nine from my calculations so he was at six hmm. seven i guess coming into the draft he might be six nine now <laughs> who knows if he ends up being six eleven whatever seven footer this fall yeah 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 right um but no I, th- I think it's just look a lot of these guys have these physical tools now uh and at the grassroots level we 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 have a better idea of how to put them into their specific roles. Scotty is a guy who's a roamer. He's versatile mm-hmm. in the sense that he can guard multiple positions. He can he can roam around and pick guys off off ball. Uh, you know, fill passing lanes, etc. Um, that's that's what his mo was and his bread and butter. I will say that the defense isn't as far along as people have imagined to be. I think that's been exasperated and over exaggerated a little bit because of how like the tools that he has, he has the potential to end up being a very, very good defender. And he's already shown that like, he's up to the challenge. He's willing to take on like the best defender every single night, guarding guys like Kevin Durant and Tatum, whenever the matchup ends up happening. But I think he's still um, a little bit too, you know, risk taking whatever you want to call it. Like he's he's Mm -hmm. a little bit too ambitious sometimes. Like going Uh, for steals. Yeah. Going for steals, whether it be like uh, he's, he's pressing up on a guy who is not a shooter, you know, mm-hmm. half court. And I love that intensity. That's something you appreciate from a player, but that's just more about recognizing the moment, recognizing what's happening around you, and then figuring out, you know, what's the what's the energy level I'm supposed to be at defensively for this specific possession. But yeah, I, th- that's stuff that'll come along, but it's it's something that with Scotty you have to you have to watch. He has all the tools, versatility mm-hmm. wise. He can do literally everything on defense. Um, but it's just about figuring out when and where to do those things, which is, it'll come in time. So what about the offensive side of things? Does, yeah. cause it seemed like coming in, you were just like hoping that it seemed like everyone was like, he has a high floor as a, as a, ro- not a rotation guy, just as like a three and D like, that's the best case scenario. So he's just like a, a, a great defender in this league for a long time, but kind of those OG and an OB questions where it's like, can he do more? It's just, the tools are all there. He has the right look and you throw OG out uh, in summer league as a point guard and you're like, we can see if he can do some other stuff (laughs) because that changes what you can be as a player. Like if you can bring the ball up and you can initiate the offense and you can take a lot of that stress off uh, Fred Van Fleet and company. And back then it was Lowry, but like, I, I wonder is Scotty Barnes 
a true like high usage offensive player is that something that you could expect to come do you still have some nightmares about uh expecting that for og like what uh <laughs> what do you think with scotty in terms of what you saw this past year that leads you to believe he can be the lead playmaker on a really good team yeah i i think uh I think we always fall into that trap with 3 and D guys or guys that mm-hmm. are projected to be 3 and D guys. Um, ever since Kawhi Leonard came into the league, it's like everybody is trying to find the next Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. Uh, feel like I've, I've noticed that same trend with Giannis is like, but he's trying to find the Giannis. Well, yeah, the reason it's hard to find them is because they're that rare. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, when it comes when it t- comes to Scotty and the difference between him and OG, I think Scotty has. At, at least initially he was he's at a different level in terms of his own creation versus og og had to kind of resort to the spot up stuff and that that depends on roster construction as well right the roster mm-hmm. back then when og was was a rookie wasn't necessarily one that required him to create for himself he was mostly just spotting up you know coming off pin downs etc but now with Scotty, there is more of a demand for him to carry the ball a little bit more, become your ball mm-hmm. handler, especially with the fact that this year, outside of Fred Van Vliet, the team didn't really have a true point guard. Um, mm-hmm. And and some would even say that Fred is probably better off ball than on ball um, as as initiator, as a creator. So I, I think the thing is, because of the fact that they were kind of limited in their resources this year, mm-hmm. it gave him full reign to to try out certain things and be a ball handler be your, be your primary guy fred van Vliet missed a bunch of games he slotted in as their starting point guard um it's these kind of experiments that that give you the hope that you know one day he can end up being a primary initiator primary creator i think the one thing for me with scotty right now is the fact that he is such a good playmaker especially in the half court and and you know his transition stuff has always been good but this year i saw a lot of growth in his decision making in in half court settings just making the right reads I think that's something that's going to carry along regardless of if his shot develops, if his pull-up jumper develops. All those things are, are going to be questions that move forward. But I think the playmaking will will help open things up for him. It, it, it'll help, um, you know, negate the amount of attention that he gets on offense or, or at least the double teams and, and, you know, help that he receives because they'll, they won't want to help off of other guys. So that I guess that's that's one thing that I've I've looked forward to, Scotty. I think the you know to my point earlier, his phil- his physicality is also something that is so so important to me. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to be a guy, in my opinion, that two three years down the line, he might end up averaging six to eight free throw attempts just because of the fact of how physical he is. If he can keep this type of physicality up, and then you know if the whistle follows, um, it's just we'll see what happens. He he's one of the best rim finishers in his class if that continues on into being an nba thing then you know it, i think the offense will will at, at the very least i think he'll have a secondary creator type of role when it comes to an hmm. offense where he can he can generate off the bounce for you a little bit uh off the ball obviously um but in terms of you know the pull-up shooting the three-point shot all that stuff is still very much so a question mark with him so do you think the minute stuff continues next year do you think this was just a one-year thing where you could do the 40 minutes of your four pieces or do you think that nick nurse kind of adjusts a little bit next year and it's like i've gotta we've got to fix our bench you've got to bring in somebody else Masai, because i cannot play six guys this many minutes and we saw kind of in the postseason what that uh looked like in fred van Vliet missing a lot of time yeah. but is that Body something that down. yeah I mean, do you think that that's something that continues next year? Or do you think we see a shift in the minutes uh, composition for this team? I think they will at least try to address it. Um, mm-hmm. I think they will at least try to address it. You know, from the way that Nick Nurse was talking in his end of season press conference to the way even Fred Van Vliet was talking about it, they know exactly what this team needs. And I think the number one issue outside of maybe not having a, a primary rim protector, a nominal big man, um, mm. would be the fact that they don't have much depth. You know, mm-hmm. after six or seven, it gets really, really bleak, really, 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 really bad. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it it doesn't allow you to do some of these things that you want to. I mean, versatility is key in the NBA, especially when you get to the playoffs. And they don't have a way to counteract something in the playoffs and be as versatile as they want to be without depth. They just they have no answer for it. If you take away their bread and butter, they're kind of lost in the wind in terms of what they can do. Um, yeah, and I, I think I think there's there's no question that the minutes thing is probably the number one thing to address, especially because if you look at it, Fred Van Vliet, 
and Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi were all top 20 in minutes this year. I believe Fred Van Vliet led the league, but um, that might have changed later down the road when he started missing games. But it, it, like those three are guys that you need to try to reduce their minutes to at least 35, 36 minutes a game versus 40. I think that's going to be one of the main things they address this summer. Okay. Uh, speaking of addressing things this summer, uh, my team, Neil. <laughs>